Warner continued to tour throughout 1990, which saw the departure of drummer Chad Channing. As the band was developing its powerful sound, Kurt became dissatisfied with Chad's style and commitment. They wanted a far more powerful drum approach. Buzz Osborne of the Melvins introduced Chris and Kurt to a 21-year-old drummer from Virginia, Dave Grohl. From his first audition, Grohl fitted in immediately, hitting the drums with such ferocity that he would virtually break drum skins whenever he played. This was more like it. The jigsaw and the final Nirvana lineup was now in place, and history was about to be made. They were never really great until Dave Grohl joined the band because he was an incredibly strong drummer, very loud, and he could sing harmony beautifully. He was a songwriter in his own right. And the other thing to remember is that Kurt Cobain was a very delicate person. His, his, his mental health was always on the edge. And he was kept creative by the efforts of his much more rooted friends uh, who solved the everyday problems that, that would have overwhelmed him. I mean, washing his socks was something he couldn't handle. And uh, when he was rooming with Dave Grohl, Grohl handled it because, as one of his friends said, Dave was raised in a van by wolves. And so he could, he could cope with life on the road and life in a band in a way that Cobain could not. I think by the time Dave Grohl joined the band in 90, uh, the dynamics within the band began to shift a bit. Um, Cobain became much more of a front man. People wanted him to be the front man. Uh, interviewers weren't as interested in talking to the other band members. Um, it, it became more the Kurt show, and I think it had run more as a democracy prior to that. Um, part of that was just with success. With success, people demanded much more out of Kurt. When Dave Grohl joined the band, uh, things worked more smoothly, uh, partly because uh, Kurt didn't have to anymore throw himself in rage against the drum kit because he was no longer so dissatisfied with what the drum kit was putting out. In concert, he famously used to interrupt the show by smashing his guitar and then smashing up the drum set. And it was because he was so angry at the, the fact that the, the song that he had in his head was being ruined by a drummer that wasn't up to snuff uh, as he saw it. When Dave Grohl joined the band, the drummer most certainly was up to snuff. These were exciting times for Nirvana. And Dave Grohl found himself touring England with the band literally weeks after joining them. My sense is, is that uh, many people perceive both Noam Selleck and Grohl as fun-loving, goofy guys because generally if there was an interview going on with Kurt, you would have one of them making, you know, putting fingers behind his head or dancing around the background or that just sort of was the personality of the band that's been captured on video and certainly that was the way they were in concert. Very fun going, let's just not take anything seriously. But both of uh, those players are, are very intelligent people and, and quite bright. I like to describe Dave as Art Garfunkel with balls. Imagine. Uh, seriously, he was uh, the final element musically in, in what made the band great, and he was another stabilizing influence, I think, in uh, the, the, the psychology of the band and, 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 and the fact that it can continue playing. And you can see that right up uh, until the, the great uh, MTV concert, when at one point Cobain is insecure about whether he can handle one of the songs and uh, whether he should play the song so, uh, solo or and and it was Dave Grohl who said go for it. So I think that, that uh, it was that human uh, interplay that helped make the band great musically. Grohl was only with the band for their last you know few years. Um, Novoselic and Cobain really had about a 10-year relationship which you know was much deeper probably than anybody else Kurt had ever dealt with in his life. He probably was as close to Chris as he was to anybody. In 1990, Kurt met Courtney Love for the first time at a concert in Portland where the band were performing. The two were immediately attracted to each other, starting a tempestuous relationship that lasted for the next two years. This finally led to marriage on a Hawaiian beach in February 1992. Six months later, Courtney gave birth to their daughter, Frances Bean.